This is D&D on the Farm RPG. I am the Dungeon Master, Belligan. We have our full cast of players here tonight, starting with Booban. Hi, I'm Booban. I'm playing Spectre, the Ravaxi Rogue. Cole? Hello, I am Cole. I am playing Kakusho, who is a bronze Dragonborn Ranger. And is definitely not dangling off of a... Uh, the, the, the train right now. Don't worry about me. And I only had to call your name once tonight. Only once. <laughs> only once. And Augie. Hi, I'm Augie. I am playing the first ever um, gnome bard train conductor combination ever to exist. Don't write in and tell us you've played that before. We don't believe it. This is the first. <laughs> this is the first. All right. We are picking up our adventure from where we were two weeks ago. So release schedule-wise, these are going to be back-to-back. But if we're missing something, it's because it's been two weeks. And uh, I'm a little under the weather, so my memory is only so-so. So So if anything is uh, inconsistent from last episode to this one, uh, too bad. Deal with it. It's just the way it's going to be. We aren't going for full immersion. Yes. (laughs) Full. (laughs) So long as you don't have a perfect memory. (laughs) <laughs> Listen, we have corn on the map, so corn. We do, we do. So the scene as we left it, Astley was drifting the train around obstacles left and right, doing pretty darn well at it. Uh Kakusho was struggling and had fallen off the back end, but Spectre had tossed a rope with a custom knot with those bunny ears in to grab him, and he's pulling along. And Agaz was still on the back of the train. And Varney, Paul, and Rashida are somewhere on the train as well, kind of spread out. And you have been pursued, in addition to the obstacles the train's been weaving around, by a quartet of very fast-moving steam wagons that have been decorated in... Uh, various colors and patterns. One of them looks like a chicken. One of them looks like a caterpillar. One of them like a goldfish. From the front on, you're looking from the sides, you can see it's just kind of like uh, cheap paper mache stuff they put on the front to uh, look scary, I guess. And uh, there are being driven by kobolds who are eagerly waiting to try and hijack this load of corn. And these steam wagons, since they aren't hauling these carts of corn you guys have, because you've got three wagons filled with corn, they move considerably faster than uh, what uh, Jill's corn wagon is going at the moment. So where to pick up? Let's see here. You had one of the wagons, specifically the chicken one, kind of pull out in front of your your steam wagon um, after you drifted around this last obstacle. And it looks like the, the pathway is pretty clear for the steam wagon to continue heading in the direction it wants to go. But the chicken wagon has now pulled out in front of you guys and is starting to slow down. So I'm going to ask Ashley, who's steering the train, uh, with this chicken wagon pulling in front of you guys, are you going to try to slow down, speed up, go around it? I'm yelling at us. Also remember... <laughs> Was it Marvin or Melvin? I don't remember what his name was. Marvin. Marvin sounds familiar. So we're going to go with Marvin, regardless of what I said last time. Uh, I'm going to yell at Marvin, asking what, a, what, a, what I should do. There's my notes. Still... It was Marvin. Because <laughs> he, was, he was like right behind uh, me shoveling coal, right? He, he was. Marvin's a one-track mind. He's, he's looking at the pesto logs, and he says, let's ram them. Just one. Ashley, it's like Ashley yeah, don't Ashley. do more than one because they're they're pretty uh, they're pretty difficult on the the engine. You don't want to do more than one. Yeah, D- throw it in there. Ashley exclaims. Okay, like, is that is it something that goes in like the I don't know the furnace? Yeah, he tossed it in where he's been shoveling coal in in the furnace. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That. All right. That is- Marvin's excited. He's been wanting to throw these in the whole time. Like, he could not wait. He's like, yippee! And he grabs it. 
throws it in and yells, hold on, back to everybody behind on oh, no. the train. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Uh. Down the line it goes. Rashida yells to Paul. Paul yells to Varney. Varney yells to where Spectre and Agos are sitting saying, hold on. Uh, Spectre tries to tie down the other end of the rope so she's not just holding on to a rope with a dr- dragonborn that is much heavier than she is. Uh, she ties it off to like the handrail as quickly as possible. All right, let's get another uh, rope tying check. Sure, what's probably that? Be uh, dexterity, dex? probably uh, acrobatics, if you'd like to use that. And right. while you're doing that, yeah. roll. get that roll. There we go. Okay, we've got a 16. A 16, all right. You're able to quickly find a post to tie it on. Akusho, you hear everybody yelling, hold on, which you're already doing for dear life. And you see Spectre bracing for something, holding onto the rope as well. And what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to keep holding on, <laughs> trying to get closer to the back so I can uh, get back on the train. But Okay, uh, so you're going to try to climb up the rope to get back yeah. on the train, or are you just going to kind of bunker down and wait for uh, how, how close to the to the edge am I? Do, like, do I think I can make it, or am I pretty Yeah, you're, you're maybe like, you're, you're pretty close. You're kind of getting drug on the ground a little bit, but you can probably... All right, I'll, I'll try to bolster my remaining energy and uh, to make a mad grass or a mad dash for it. Okay, uh, let's get a, an athletics check and see if, if Kakusho can uh, manage to get back on the back of the train here. Uh, I rolled a twenty-one, so hopefully that's a good roll. We're starting Ooh, off hot tonight. Roll. Yeah, we got that crappy roll out before we hit record. It looks like and exactly. <laughs> you got to roll one first. <laughs> All right, so Spectre ties the rope on, doing an excellent job. It gives it just a little bit more leverage for Kakusho to hoist himself up, and he's holding on the back of the train. And just as he gets there, there is a loud thud as the train or the the steam wagon rams the back of the chicken wagon. And everybody needs to make a straight saving throw again now to not get knocked off train again. Oof. Got an eight. A nine or a 10, but I'm in the driver's seat. You are in the driver's seat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to roll for the NPCs here really quick. We got an eight, a nine, and a 12. Not very good. <laughs> All right. Our NPCs rolled a 13, a 15, and a 12. And I need one more. There's four NPCs out here. All right, so just going down the order. Okay. The back of the the chicken wagon just gets rammed as this thing speeds up and goes even faster than the chicken wagon does. Uh, Spectre, because she spent her time tying this rope down, wasn't ready for the collision and gets knocked off the the backside of the train. Uh, Astley was kind of ready for it. Wouldn't we be pushed forward because we rammed the back you're right yep yep other way <laughs> not not saying don't we didn't talk to me about train, physics but <laughs> i just feel like we're going in the wrong direction get jostled around everywhere okay <laughs> kakusha falls off extra hard now <laughs> kakusha holds on specter falls between the two carts uh and kind of lands on the hitch between the two carts and Agos kind of lands in the same position next to next to Spectre. Agos didn't seem like he was quite ready uh, for this impact. Pretty unexpected. Um, Astley in the front also wasn't ready for the impact, despite seeing it coming. I was and watching the log go in. Watching the log. <laughs> it was pretty. And you just slam into the front of the train, and you've got this massive headache as your bell's kind of ringing. Um, which is going to make the next check, whatever that is, be a disadvantage. Oof. All right, let's see how effective this ram was, shall we? Let's get a, uh, let's roll this as an attack roll with the train as a weapon. <laughs> if Ashley <laughs> was driving, we'll just ram. do it a straight up D20. <laughs> a train ram. That is a 16. That is a 16. All right. Is it a hit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So two things happen. 
the train rams into the back of this chicken steam wagon and this cobalt construction just isn't that great the whole thing the back end of it collapses and the train that you guys are driving where the the steam wagon ends up just rolling over the top of it and just completely (laughs) crushing it to shreds underneath giving kind of a bumpy ride for everybody already trying to hold on uh maybe a little corn flies off the side there were three kobolds that were on the chicken wagon and they have jumped off and are now on top of the train and they're making their way back towards the conductor seat now so they're on top of our train so we've got they're on top of your train yeah they jumped off of theirs they they got torn and uh, not all of them made it. There were two on there that they got crushed underneath your train, but three of them made it on top of. Oh no! Your rest, train in kinda, rest in pieces. Rest in pieces. Up on top. So let's do this. Uh, everyone's kind of spaced out, but let's get some initiative rolls to handle these kobolds up top. Unless you've got some other plan on on how to do it, it's not going to involve combat. What if we just put another log in? Cool. No. That was a nat 20 initiative. Uh, for me, anyway. That was a uh, 14. I got a 7. All right. So I rolled two die, one for the NPCs, and one for the bad guys. They're both 17 and 18, so it'll be in order. Spectre, then it will be the bad guys, then it will be the... Good NPCs, and then we will go Kakusho, and last it will be Astley. Lastly so, is Astley. Lastly is Astley. <laughs> so Poop on Spectre is down here. The train's been shaking around. Uh, and we'll just say for the sake of it, you've got a pretty good idea that there's probably kobolds you got to deal with on the train. What would Spectre like to do? Um. So she's going to probably want to uh, pull herself up into the train that she fell in between the two, the one in the middle, the car. Okay. Um, Could can she see the kobolds on top of the engine right now, or are they? Yes. Yeah. If you're on top of the cart, you can. Okay. Um. So she's gonna um shoot them with her short bow from here. Um, Okay. So am I able to get sneak attack on this? Probably not yet, no. Okay, so I will just shoot. Aiming at one of the two. So that is, um, yeah, 22 to hit. Mm -hmm. And that would be six piercing damage. So the arrow goes flying, impels one of these kobolds, and he just completely flies off the wagon to the side dead before he hits the ground. Oh. <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> yes. A lot of power behind that little creature, I guess. Oh, poor cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't known for having lots and lots of hit points. But this that's is true. The... <laughs> <laughs> that's not the only thing that can make them obnoxious. All right. Next was the kobolds, right? Yes. Yes, I believe so. So there's two still on the train, and they both run forward, and they hop down into the conductor's area where Marvin and where Astley are at. And they pull out daggers, and one of them is moving towards Marvin, who's holding the shovel with the coal in it. And the other one moves towards Astley. And they don't stab you guys just yet. They instead issue an order telling you to stop the train. Say, stop the train and get out. Can I react to that? On your turn, yeah. You'll be able to react to it. Um, When it comes up, unless you had something that was a prepared reaction uh, from one of your abilities. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, The other NPCs, you have... Varney, Paul, and Rashid, they start running towards the area where the conductor uh, box is. They're not able to get all the way there. They were kind of spread out on the train, but they kind of move up towards the front of the cart, kind of where my corn icon is on the map. 
So they're towards the front of that first cart. Um, Agaz, you don't see. He's he was down where Spectre was at, and uh, he look he's doing something down there, but you can't quite see what it is. And with that, we will get to Cole with Kakusho. What is Kakusho going to do? He's up in the back of the train. So at this point, uh, have they sort of gone out of view or? Um, yeah, once they hop down, you don't see him anymore. You saw Spectre shoot off one of them. You know, Agaz is still between these these two train carts. And then off in the distance, you can see three other kobold steam wagons kind of coming up side by side with you guys. They're not super close yet, but they're they're going to be closing the gap here before too long. Okay, well, I will, I guess, make my way towards the conductor area. I'm not sure if that'll take my entire... Uh, okay move or not let me get a perception check uh a 15 15 very nice okay as kakusho is making his way forward he gets kind of to the front of the wagon the last wagon that he's on with the corn and you look down and you see agaz and he is trying to disconnect the hitch that's connecting this back wagon which would Uh, effectively separate it from the rest of the train <laughs> Kakusha who yells at Agaz and wonders what uh, Agaz is doing. Like, hey, okay. I'm still back here. Don't leave me behind. Okay. Agaz hasn't really said anything so far. Um, but when you yell, what's going on? It seems almost startled and looks up. And kind of for the first time, you can see inside the mask there what should be an automaton, you actually see some eyes that look familiar because they have kind of a draconic look, almost like your own. Oh. Uh, (laughs) Kakusho attempts to kick Agaz, or whoever it is, from what they're doing. Okay. Is that, uh, can I do that? (laughs) Sure, yeah, I can go down and kick him. (laughs) Straight up attack roll. Uh, Okay. Should I... Uh, is that just a what, sit on here somewhere? Is it just just, a D20? just do an attack roll with one of your weapons? Just a d twenty, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, I rolled a fourteen with my kick towards Agaz. Yeah, so you kick Agaz in in the head, and the top half of Agaz goes flying off as you do so, and you realize that why everybody thought Agaz was an automaton, it really wasn't. Uh, what you see was Agaz was not three, but two kobolds, essentially in a trench coat, <laughs> dressed up oh, as an automaton. A, met- a metal trench <laughs> one coat. One of them goes flying <laughs> off. Amazing. Hello there. <laughs> uh, as the one goes flying off, he, he gives his battle cry, for the core, just before hitting the ground, <laughs> being crushed under the wheels of the steam wagon. The other one is still there trying to uh, undo the hitch uh, from this cart. So is this one just like the legs of Agaz? Yes. <laughs> yeah, his, <laughs> his, his disguise like has kind of been taken off at this point. Did he have to like wiggle his arms out of like the pant holes? Something like that. All right, that takes us to Augie with Astley. Augie's um, being threatened. I never, I never had Marvin do anything. He's kind of looking to, to Astley for a lead as to what to do. He's holding the shovel. So they they spoke to us, which um, means that they can under like they speak common language, right? Yes. Uh, Ashley will cast command um, on one of them and say, f- "Flee." Okay. Yeah. On the one that is is near Ashley, or the one that's near Marvin? Probably on the one that that's near that's near me. Okay. Um, the target must succeed a wisdom so, saving throw. All right, let's get a wisdom saving throw. What's the DC? Uh, that doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Oh no, oh, that's <laughs> not matter at all. Oh no, <laughs> doesn't matter. Our kobold rolled a one <laughs> with a minus one to it, so that's a zero <laughs> for the saving throw. Uh, which one was Ashley commanding again? I asked, and I the, did not listen one, to the answer. 
the one closest to to me. Okay. I said flee. Uh, it does. You say flee, and it has no hesitation. It it runs and jumps off the side of the wagon, uh, lands in the dirt, jumped out far enough that uh, it doesn't get crushed. Marvin's going to try the same thing that you did. It's like, flee! And he's kind of like waving the shovel at this guy. It's an intimidation check. We'll see how intimidating he is here. Not very. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> oh, Marvin. <laughs> you tried. You, you got to put those dice in jail. <laughs> That's another one. A zero. The DM has rolled two ones in a row. <laughs> Way to dice, where'd they go? Can I? Yeah. So... For for the the way that like the conductor's station is like so is this other Colbel just standing in front of an open door? Pretty much. Yeah, kind of. Can I the doors in the in the back, kind of between the the engine and the, the rest of the train. Can I use my bonus action to just to try to push him? If we were playing um Baldur's Gate three, you could totally do that. Slurring Studios let you do anything with a bonus action. Um, but no, not in this case. Um, not when we're casting a spell through main action. So that is an option for, for next time on the on the order, though. I'd probably let Spectre do it with a cunning action, but I don't want to uh infringe on what makes Rogue special. <laughs> with that, it does take us back to the top of the initiative order with Spectre. So Spectre just saw what Kukusho did. I also saw another one of the kobolds jump out of the, the side of the train. And the other three carts are making their way over. They're getting closer and closer to, to your wagon. Um, I'm going to hop down next to this kobold, and I'm going to attack him because he's trying to unhitch this back wagon. Uh, obviously, a traitor in our midst, um, yep. being two two kobolds in a trench coat here. Um, and. Uh, can I sneak attack on this one just because Kakusho's right here? Sure. All right, cool. Let me roll. And I'm going with my ones. short swords. Let's see. So that was a nine. A nine will not hit the uh, lower kobold. All right, I'm going to go with my offhand then <laughs> with no sneak attack. Oh, it could still be a sneak attack if it hits. Oh, it can but... be? Okay, cool. Let's yep. see. Uh, that's an 18 on that one. An 18. An 18 will hit. Yes. And that's 7 damage. And let's roll the sneak attack with another 6. So that is... Math is not my strong suit. 13. Uh, 13. Yeah. 13. Actually, 13. a 10. You don't get the, the plus 3. But oh, okay, it's, yep. a, it's a moot point. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> matter. All right. The, uh, yeah, the second short sword now, right? The, yes, uh, short sword. Sweet upgrade. Yes. Does the job. Finishes off the uh, the other half of Agaz. The uh, fake automaton. It was really two kobolds in a trench coat. All right. Uh, the last kobold on the train, as the other carts are getting closer, is still in the conductor's box. And uh, Marvin just tried to intimidate him with absolutely no success and so this kobold's going to try to throw his weight around and stab marvin uh, with the little dagger that he's pulled out <gasps> marvin no that is a 16 that is definitely going to hit marvin three points of damage so marvin gets stabbed and he hunches over in pain and he's just kind of looking uh helplessly at astley like what's going on The uh, attempt to copy what acid did didn't, didn't help out a whole lot. Um, just as that happens, Rashida jumps in and grabs the other kobold and kind of wraps her arms around him like she's pinning him just to keep him tied up. Uh, at the same time, uh, Paul's also able to jump in. Varney's a little bit further behind. Paul jumps in. He goes down and kind of runs over to to aid Marvin and it's kind of like, are you all right, Marvin? And Marvin's like, I'm dying. Oh, it's terrible. And he's kind of playing it up worse than it actually is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bad stab wound, 
but uh, you know, it's not it's, that alone isn't going to kill him. But he's playing like he's dying from it, and so Paul's trying to to comfort him. Um, Rashida has this cobalt kind of wrapped up, and then Varney, who's still up top, is kind of yelling back at Spectre and Kakusho, saying those other carts are getting close, and he's he's letting kind of everybody know both uh, Astley and Marvin that are in the in the conductor engine and Spectre and Kakusho that are on the on the back two carts. That takes us in the initiative order. To Kakusho. All right. Um, yeah, so Kakusho sees that uh, Aga's imposter has been thwarted. Um, are the carts in range of a longbow? Yes. Okay. Does it appear like firing an arrow will actually be effective? Like, can I see a driver to fire at? Or am I just kind of blindly firing in the direction? So firing an arrow at the cart, you wouldn't be able to hit a conductor that's inside. Probably there are other kobolds on there. You could try to shoot one or two off. Um, if you're just trying to damage the the wagon, an arrow by itself probably isn't going to do a whole lot. So is the conductor behind some glass, or I guess like what's the reason the conductor is not in range? Well, you you can't see him from the side. They're they're kind of straight out moving towards you guys. If if you're looking from the front, you might be able to see like their head through a window, but it's kind of on the side where you don't you can't see a whole lot of what's going on inside the okay, so their conductor cabins. They're approaching kind of like parallel to us instead of yes, them. exactly, exactly. Yeah, they're moving the same direction, just coming in closer. Okay, um, yeah, I guess Kakusha will take aim at some of the the cobalts that are just lingering around. I guess. Just a you know, fire maybe a warning shot type of thing and kind of scare them off. Okay. Let's get an uh, attack roll with that bow. An unnatural 20. Uh, that unnatural was 20. A very unnatural 20. It's <laughs> a pretty good roll. So Kakusho is totally able to, to pick out one of these kobolds kind of riding on top of one of the wagons and shoot. Um, you had your choice because there's three carts. The closest one we were at in the back of the train was the one that's like a goldfish. You had the dog one in the middle and then the caterpillar one in front of that. Uh, uh, which one were you trying I'll to go for? The one closest. So I guess the one, the goldfish one. Off the goldfish. All right. Yeah. So you line up a shot, take it. And one of the kobolds, again, just goes flying off the impact of the arrow. It just completely knocks him off his wagon. He's probably dead as soon as the arrow hits him and just kind of goes flying off. Bouncing off the ground in the dirt, left behind. Does uh, right. does anyone care? Are they still just moving on without him, or what's uh, is there any reaction that I know? Uh, they kind of see what's going on the other kobolds, but they don't necessarily care. They don't okay. have a they don't have a lot of uh, respect for for their lives or anyone else's. <laughs> okay. Like, oh, guess we'll see him at dinner. Keep going. Their response. What what does Spectre like to do? Um, I think she um Oh hold on a second. We're not at Spectre. <clears throat> <laughs> I gotta follow oh, this yeah. oh yes. Poor Astley. Astley. Oh, Astley. Astley. Astley, Astley. Astley. <laughs> um Astley's scene is you've got Rashida that has grappled this kobold and Marvin's been stabbed. Paul's kind of trying to make sure he's all right, although Paul doesn't necessarily have any healing capabilities or first aid kit or anything on him at the moment. Um, so like if I look out like the little window or whatever, can I see the other, the steam wagons? Um, from the side, you might be able to, you know that they're there. Uh, cause Varney was telling you guys they're getting close. How far away would you say that they are? Uh, probably 30, 40 feet at this point. All right. Can I like, can I just say, like, Paul, get in the driver's seat and then use my movement action to go kind of where I can see them and then do my action? So you want to get on, like, on top of the train? Yeah. Like on the cart by where Paul it's, is? Where some, kind of swaps, somewhere that, somewhere that I can physically see the carts. 
for the steam wagon. Yeah, so you, you could move you could move out of the conductor's engine back on top of that first cart, kind of where Paul is, and, and tell him to get in. You guys can swap spots, no problem. Okay. Um, and then I would like to cast Shatter on the front. I the, there's a dice covering it, but the, I think it's the caterpillar. Yep, the I caterpillar like one. Cast, okay, cast Shatter. <laughs> okay, that's a uh, Constitution save, right? Yep. Does Shatter um, affect non inorganic materials uh, more strongly? Is that part of the spell? Um, a is it like double damage on structures or something? A non-magical object that isn't being worn or carried also takes damage if it's in the spell's area. Mm-hmm. 13. It remind me, Ashley's spell save DC. Was it 13 it's, or 14? It is, it, it's 14. 14. So is, a, okay. so is that a save or is that a fail? If it matches. The 14 is a save. It passes. Okay, so then that's... So it's half damage for for one of the kobolds, uh, full damage for two of them, because they were all in the area of the shatter spell. So two of them took thirteen points, and one of them took six, six and a half, six, six. seven, and then he ran down. The, so six. Yep. What about the wagon? Yeah, the wagon gets ripped up. It's not completely destroyed, but it is it is pretty heavily damaged uh, at this point, and that- it. Does it do anything? We'll get to it. <laughs> okay. It slows down for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Does it cause a, a, a train crash or wagon crash? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Potentially. Now we're to Spectre. So you just saw Astley cast Shatter on this other front wagon uh, of these three that are pursuing. And uh, two of the kobolds on it, you can see, just kind of blow up. One of oh. them looks pretty hurt. I uh Spectre starts like hooting and hollering and clapping a little bit. She likes she thought that was like a that was a good move. She's like, "Woohoo! Get him." But then she like takes aim with a short bow uh for somebody on the the dog dragon, um one of the one of the kobolds on there. She's going to pick off one. Actually, could she hit the one that's been critically injured in the other cart with her? With her short bow from here? The short bow? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, then she's going to aim at the last one that's critically damaged to, like, pick the the last bit of them off. All right. Let's roll her. Uh, it's a 19. That's a pretty good hit. Good. Yep. <laughs> he, said he takes nine nine additional damage. All right. This kobold thought he was lucky as he saw his two, two buddies just blow up that he was uh, only seriously maimed. <laughs> arrow puts an end to him. Put him out of his misery. <laughs> Put him out of his misery. So the caterpillar wagon has been totally torn up. The kobolds that were on top have all been dealt with. And the wagon starts to veer, slowing down. The dog wagon has to steer one way to try to get out of the way. And the goldfish, the other, out of the way. I'm going to make a roll really quickly to see if they're successful in doing so. <laughs> One of them is clearly not <laughs> with a six and a 12. All right. So the, the dog wagon only gets partially out of the way and it clips the side of it and just starts spinning around like it's spinning out and it's able to correct and kind of turn back towards you guys. But he's, he's behind a ways now. The goldfish one was able to get out of the way and then kind of, I'm just going to delete the, caterpillar one off the map as well as the chicken one goodbye forever the goldfish one gets closer to you guys and the kobolds on top start slinging stuff at you guys and you're not quite sure what they are but let's have everybody on top so right now that's going to be the three of you kusho specter and Ashley, make a dexterity saving throw i would like to add my bardic inspiration to my role I can do that. Okay, that's a D6. I don't know how to use it. I'm just going to roll a D6. Okay. A 14. Okay. That saved a, a trio of failures, only being two failures. <laughs> <in this case. laughs> so Spectre had a 10. Astley had a 4. Thanks to being inspired, oh, got up to a 14. Wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap my number one ribbon. I forgot I had okay. it. I'm tapping <laughs> it. You, I, I have a number one you. 
You both have a bardic inspiration I gave you like days ago too. Oh, I do. So, well, unless you guys uh, used it, I gave it to you like days ago. I don't know if it goes bad. Do they go bad? They spoil eventually. Start to smell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use my ribbon anyway. I'm gonna roll a d12 and add okay. it to my roll. And so that's eleven points. So. <laughs> 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 That'll hopefully <laughs> hopefully save me, uh, bringing me up to a, a 21. I think that will probably pass. I don't think Kakusho's got anything extra special other than a potential inspiration from Astley, right? Well, uh, at the moment, Kakusho's bag is still where he was sleeping. So if he, even if he had that, it is not with him. So I, whatever, right. whatever's the, the, coming uh, at him is going to hit him. The bardic inspiration is supposed to be within 10 minutes of you, so it's not like it's it lasts for days and days. Oh, okay. uh, um, well, now we know. Kakusho gets hit with several of uh, these white flying objects, and he finds himself covered in egg yolk, as well as <laughs> the sides yeah. of the train. <laughs> egg yolk, yep. They're shooting eggs at you guys. Um Spectre and Astley both look like they're about to get hit, right? As Astley remembers some spying words told herself, and Spectre hits that uh, that first place ribbon <laughs> she's been sitting on, and just stands there posing like like she's a winner. <laughs> and miraculously, the the eggs miss her. <laughs> All right. So, with these eggs, what they do is they they slow the, down the train a little bit as they get kind of caught in the wheels and are making things just a little bit gunky. We're starting to pick up stuff. And Kakusho is going to have disadvantage on his next action, whatever that is, uh, as a result of the sticky egg yolk covering him uh, mostly on his face. And it smells pretty bad. Like these were not these were not uh, fresh eggs by any means. With the, the cart slowing down a little bit, this dog train uh, steam wagon is able to catch up a little bit towards you guys. Um, I feel like rather, I don't know, do you want to keep putting this initiative order or do you want to take a moment to, to make a plan on what to do? I'm fine with this order if everybody wants to keep going on this order, but... Um, yeah, it's fine. Who, uh, Spectre, can, can we, I ask a question, who's steering the ship right now? Who's steering this train? Paul. Paul is. Okay, Paul's taking over. Yeah, well, I, I hope so. <laughs> I told him to. Paul's not a drift master. He's no drift master. <laughs> Paul's doing his best. He's doing his best. Okay. Well, then I'm fine with this initiative order. Uh, as, long as, as long as somebody's steering I mean, maybe, the ship. I mean, maybe, Mar- maybe Marvin got over himself and got back in the driver's seat. Who knows? Maybe. You guys can't see what's going on in the engine room. Okay, if we're gonna stick in the order, then uh, Kakusho's up. The uh, goldfish wagon is probably only twenty feet away from you guys. It's shooting eggs like crazy, and the um, dog wagon is behind you guys, maybe only about ten feet back at this point. Okay. Well, that uh, that actually was the question I was gonna ask. Um, so yeah, K- Kakusho moves over to where he put his bag, which I believe was at the back of the second cart um and he remembers that there's uh some torches in there uh courtesy of the wonderful explorers pack uh Mm -hmm. so he'll uh grab some of the torches out of there uh light one and attempt to kind of sort of chuck it at the dog cart that's behind us okay Sounds like a wonderful plan. So we'll have you just make an attack roll with that torch. It is a disadvantage from all of this uh, yucky egg yolk. Uh, so, wait, how do I make it? So there's two of them. Just roll a second one. Okay. Uh, you rolled one. The second one was a nine. Okay. The first one, 17. A flaming torch goes hurling <laughs> off towards the, uh, the dog cart. And the egg yolk's making it really hard to see where you're where you're throwing it. You're kind of wiping out your eyes to toss it. You see the flaming torch go, and it hits the ground just a little bit short of where it needs to, and just kind of gets run over. <laughs> Kakusho out of anger kicks some of the cor- uh, kicks some of the car, and then is now <laughs> hobbling around with a hurt foot. Yeah, yeah. There was there was some potential, but it uh, didn't uh, <laughs> didn't quite pan out. <laughs> 
Back to the top of the order, Ashley <clears throat> is up. No, it's the bottom of the order, Ashley's up, sorry. I the right person, <laughs> wrong, wrong part of the mission order. Ashley cast Shatter at the goldfish cart. I knew that was coming. And that is either 8 or 16, 16 points of damage. Okay. Uh, one, one fail and two saves. One fail, two pass. So the Shatter is... Is that more damage or less than last time? More. A little more. Okay. The shatter itself is more effective. And the the goldfish wagon takes some pretty heavy damage. But the kobolds on it, um, only one of them ends up uh, just being totally caught off guard. Uh, wasn't paying attention to what happened to the other wagon. It just had to do, had to, to steer around. The other two kind of knew what was coming and kind of braced and took cover. They still get hurt pretty bad. Um, a lot of the, the fish scale decorations go flying off this thing uh but they aren't quite dead yet they're just uh severely injured um after i do that can i use my movement to go back into the engine room yes and just kind of see what's going on in there did paul take the wheel um yeah he did can i tell Out him of desperation to he took the wheel <laughs> give me the wheel back he says sure it's harder than it looks and he lets go and the train kind of wobbles a little bit. Ashley grabs the wheel. Um, Marvin's still screaming that he's dying. Paul is trying to calm him down. Rashida is trying to tie up this kobold. That's kind of what's going on in the in the wagon. Can I tell her right. to throw the kobold off just when her like when her turn comes? Can I tell her get rid of that thing? <laughs> you can. We'll see if she listens here in a little bit. Now we're at the top of the order. <laughs> Spectre. <laughs> okay. Um, so Spectre hoots and hollers again about the about the shatter. She's like, I love that move. That's a great move. Um, and she takes aim with her short bow again at the at one of the other two kobolds on the top of the ship or the mm -hmm. steam wagon and is going to attempt to shoot one of them. All righty. And does not, I'm assuming, because that was an eight. It was a good attempt. A nice attempt was made. <laughs> good effort. Good effort. The shot goes flying over. Not much, not much else happens. All right. Whiff. In, yep. Inside the cabin, um, just to follow up on the NPCs, um, Paul is now kind of up top seeing what's going on watching everything uh kind of just waiting to take action at this point he doesn't have a bow or anything else he maybe picks up a piece of corn and kind of throws it towards the the goldfish wagon not that it does much and rashida hears the um i think i might be getting varney and paul mixed up <laughs> for who's where but not a big deal i think paul was taking care of marvin and varney was the one who went back out but anyway rashida hears uh Ashley say, you know, throw the cobalt overboard. And she just kind of asked, don't you want to keep one to ask questions to later on? Figure out who they're working for, where they're going, what, what they're trying to do. And just looks for a, a nod of confirmation one way or the other from Ashley really quick before complying. As long as you make sure he doesn't get, doesn't squirrel away. That's your job. All right. Rashida's tied up doing that. Paul, I think, was taking care of Marvin. And Varney's the one who's up, up on top of the wagon now. Uh, regardless of what I said earlier, that's what's happening from now on. Okay. Goldfish wagon comes all the way over now and rams into the side of the, the cart. And as it does so, the two kobolds that are on hop off onto that first cart where Varney's at. And they gang up on Varney, and they're going to try to push him overboard. Not Varney. All right. So we had an 11 and an 8 contested by an 8. The 11 is going to win. So the two kobolds work together, and they push Varney overboard. He goes falling off the side uh, of the cart over here. Does he look okay? <laughs> uh, he's probably not great. Probably not great. The dog wagon also catches up and comes up on the side, and three kobolds hop off of it onto the back wagon now. 
where they are staring at Kakusho and Spectre in the back. And there's still a conductor inside of both of these wagons driving him, but these are the kobolds that were kind of riding off top. And as they kind of hop off, they they give their, their war cry, For the corn! But you're hearing them hoot and holler more. That brings us to Kakusho. All right. Uh, well, Kakusho, <laughs> seeing a bunch of kobolds approaching, uh, takes out... Uh, the short swords, uh, one in each hand, and just start swinging at them, basically. Okay. Yeah, he can he can rush backwards towards them and certainly uh, take a swing at it. Ooh! The it's, a, it's a natural wow, 20. 20. There we go. That's a crit. <laughs> the blind swing it is working. The uh, damage dice obviously did not roll correctly. It was rolling a D0 for damage on that. <laughs> Perfect. So, give us a 2d6. Well, if it's a crit, isn't it just max? No, it's it's just double double dice. Oh. Roll 2d6, not 2. Uh. With a d6 somewhere spaced afterwards. <laughs> Kakusha learns the commands really quickly. There we go. All right. That's going right. to be 11 Six points of damage. Two. That will absolutely skewer one of these uh, corn hoarding kobolds. Mark him off. Was was Kakusho using two swords? Uh yes. Like Spectre? All right. The rapier. Nope. Not using the rapier. <laughs> Just my short swords. He's learned how to say it now. Maybe he can use it. Uh, trust me, I'll, I'll forget in a second. It's not worth it. <laughs> All right. It's it's listed as a D6 here. I wonder. Yeah. I'll try to figure out why it doesn't like the D6, but all right, let's get that second attack roll for the offhand. Uh, okay. Uh, and then, oh, that is offhand. 21. It, is it uh, different than the, well, I guess in this case, they're both 21, so it probably doesn't matter. But okay. Yeah, the two hit roll is the same. The damage roll is just a D6 without the bonus three on it. A4. Four damage. Okay. The second kobold gets stabbed, and he's hurt pretty bad, but he is uh, not out of the fight yet. All right. The back of the train we'll come back to in just a moment. We are at the bottom of the initiative order with Astley, who's back in on the train, and you got two kobolds staring down in the conductor's box. Rashida is holding on to the one kobold, tying him up, and... Paul is taking care of Marvin, who's still convinced he's going to die. What is Astley going to do? Um, Astley is going to steer the train slightly to the to the left to try to like bump the goldfish cart. Not like a full turn, but just enough to like I don't know, push back a little. Okay. I don't know what Pit kind maneuver. of roll that is. It's going to be another vehicle check, which is just a straight up D20 in this case. That is a two. That's a two. I turned, I turned, I, I shifted right. <laughs> you doubled five. my first two rolls. <laughs> okay. Ashley gets the, the uh, control screwed up. Uh, instead of ramming the, uh, the goldfish cart kind of goes the opposite direction. And uh, ends up putting a little bit of space between <laughs> between the two. So rather than kind of knocking it out, it just kind of separates and, and pulls off to the side. Um, can Astley also yell at Marvin that he's fine, that he's going to be fine and to start helping? Uh, is this going to be an intimidation or a persuasion? Um, prob- probably persuasion, I guess. But okay. both. I mean... <laughs> I'm not trying to scare him. I'm just annoyed with him. You're not going to just demand. Yeah, I just what, like, what are you doing? So, All right, let's get a roll. See how it goes. That is a 10 or an unnatural 20. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10. Like, what are you doing, Marvin? Get up. Marvin's like, I'm dying here. Can't you see? <laughs> I tell him when he's, he's not, able he's not to having move. it. I tell him when he's able to move to come closer to me. All right. Cure wounds him or something. Something that might help. That might help. 
that takes us now to the top of the initiative order with with Spectre. Um, Kakusho has handled the, the three kobolds are pretty well. He's knocked off one and injured another one. What is Spectre going to do? You've also got two kobolds at the front of the train. Uh, they're looking down at the conductor's box. Um, I feel like Kakusha's got these guys at the back of the train pretty much handled. So she's going to try to make a, a quick dash up to the front um, of the train where the other two kobolds... Or is it two or is it three up the front? There are two. Okay, yeah. She's going to go up to the, the front and uh, see if she can't handle these two kobolds um, since they are okay. very squishy. Um, so sh- can I sneak attack one uh, with my first one? I'm just going to go, I'm going to go short sword, run and short sword it. So the distance is far enough. You'll probably have to dash with your cunning action to get okay. up, which takes your bonus action. So you'll get, you'll get one good attack off. All right. Um, I'll, but I'll yeah, you've got, there, you've got everybody down in the wagon behind that they're paying attention to. So we'll we'll allow a sneak attack in this. Sweet. All right. So I'm gonna just gun it and uh, attack one of the. Uh, so that would be an 18 to hit. An 18. That is a hit. And I will roll my sneak attack damage. So that's um, six added on to the the five. So that's uh, 11. That's 11. All right. That's a good hit. Yeah, the, this kobold just doesn't even see it coming, and this blade just gets shoved <laughs> through it, through the front of it, sending a, a spray of blood kind of down on those in the in the conductor's <laughs> oh, <laughs> in okay. front. And Marvin's convinced it's his blood. See, I'm bleeding out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> just not handling it. Not handling it well. <laughs> The kobolds are up. We've got two that are back with Kakusho. They pull out their daggers and are going to try to attack him. So we're going to roll for them first. And one of them is going to get a good stabby in on Kakusho. The other one does not. Kakusho is going to get hit for three points of damage. So not super significant, but it's something. Right. The other kobold still on the train is turns around and sees Spectre there and is actually going to try to push Spectre off the train rather than, than uh, stab her. And so this is going to be a contested athletics check. So Spectre is going to make oh. an athletics check versus whatever the kobold rolls. Okay. So we'll see how this goes. Uh-oh. <laughs> I did not wow. make my athletics check. I got an eleven. Oh, no. Are you sure I can't roll acrobatics? <laughs> what if it's what if it's with advantage? What if it's with advantage? Yeah, it wouldn't be an advantage. You could have rolled ac- acrobatics. It doesn't. It doesn't help. All right, let me get a dexterity saving throw from Spectre. You got it. Uh, <laughs> another ten. A ten. Oh. Better. Where's that ribbon when you need it? <laughs> right? <laughs> I used it to not get hit with eggs. <laughs> the specter gets pushed off the wagon and luckily is able to keep her feet enough that rather than hitting the ground, she kind of lands on and grabs the side of the, the goldfish wagon that's right next to you. Um, there's still a kobold driving it inside. But that is where where Spectre ends up. Luckily, not on the ground. Not on the ground, Left underneath in, any wheels. Underneath any wheels. <laughs> yes. Luckily, in that case. Oh, boy. Yeah, the other two wagons that are driving right now are just kind of holding their position where they're at. They're, there's drivers in there. They don't want to abandon the vehicles. They're just trying to keep up. And that is going to bring us to Kakusho. Well, worked pretty well last time, so... I'll just uh, keep swinging with my short swords, I guess. Okay. I'm a little uh, annoyed now that they have stabbed me with a dagger. Um, yeah. At some point, Kakusho's going to use his breath weapon. I don't know if that's going to be today or not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> 18, that will hit. 18. And I don't know if I fixed the damage. So do I need to It roll? is fixed. That okay. is correct. Perfect. Yeah. That was the one that was already hurt. Uh, or the other one. Uh, 
Well, <laughs> I guess I'll uh, the, the one that was already hurt. I would probably have been swinging at first. All right, try to take him out. All right, that does yeah. finish off the other one, leaving Picusha squaring off with just one last cobalt. Okay, so then this one's my offhand. Um, say twenty-two. Twenty-two. That's a good hit. These short swords one. are doing some work today. <laughs> So it does just one point of damage. It doesn't get the plus three for yep. being the offhand. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Kakusho. Has he missed today? I, just with the torch, he missed right? missed the torch. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been the coolest thing. So <laughs> kind of bummed out about that. But oh well. We'd love to have a flaming dog wagon. Yep. <laughs> Come with torch, you guys. Okay. That brings us now to Spectre, who's kind of been knocked off the feet, landed on top of. (laughs) (laughs) No, that brings us down. Thrice. I I can hear the buzzer (laughs) already. (laughs) The buzzer for you with advantage. All right, we'll we'll give we'll give Ashley inspiration for reminding the DM. What is job this what's he supposed to do? <laughs> All right. What's Ashley gonna do? Um what I know that, that Spectre kind of that that happened up there. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um Ashley tries to do the same thing and just kind of ram into the other ram into the goldfish, hoping that Spectre would be ready to come back on, on board. Okay. Let's get that vehicle check. And then should I roll another uh, inspiration? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, don't you? Oh, or yeah. You can roll your insp- yeah. <laughs> no, an inspiration, you roll two die and take the higher. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, so another 20? It's like getting advantage. No, it's not It's not a bardic inspiration. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, another d20, and then you take the higher the two rolls. It's like having advantage on the roll. Oh. Okay, that's All a better right. roll. That's better, yeah. A 15 good. Okay, so are we just trying to edge right up so that there's no gap between the vehicles or actually ram it or what, what exactly? I'm trying to ram it. Uh, like I was actually trying to do. Ram it enough to kind of jostle it. You're not trying to knock Spectre off it, are you? No. I'm trying to... I'm a, I know that Spectre is a talented acrobat, acrobatic. Uh, All right. I don't know about that, about that last roll I had, so let's see. <laughs> Steam wagon slams into the side of the goldfish cart, and it was already pretty heavily damaged from the shatter, and it just starts falling apart. And Spectre's still on top of it. So now we're going to come to Spectre for real. <laughs> okay. The goldfish uh, wagon that you're on is falling apart, falling behind. You got to act quickly. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to use my. Uh, can I use my cunning action to jump uh, to the other? Using acrobatics this time? Yes. Okay. All right, we're jumping over. Uh, I'll take the 16. 16. All right, that's good enough. You hop off just as the goldfish wagon is falling apart into a massive dust ball of wood and coal and uh, glass cobalt that's in there. His pieces <laughs> flying everywhere as well. Just... Uh, I'll grab the whole thing. There we go. All right, Spectre's back on the wagon. Great. And do I can I attack this guy that pushed me while I'm here, or is that my whole the whole yeah. turn? It'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, now I'm mad, and I'm going to attack attack him. Um. Let's see. Uh, that's an unnatural twenty. Okay. So he's going to take a seven damage. And this still can be a sneak attack because Ooh, he's got. Oh uh, boy, yeah, and he's he your allies all that I'm back, so we'll add the plus four to that. <laughs> <laughs> he was shocked. He thought he was rid of you. No, <laughs> <laughs> not rid of me yet. And now he's got a blade sticking through him. <laughs> yep, <laughs> destroyed. That leaves one last kobold on the back of the cart uh, on the last wagon next to. Kakusho, who has been stabbed and isn't looking so hot. There's only one wagon left as well. And he's got to decide wagon, what to do. Did that wagon have to maneuver also out of the goldfish's way? Probably a little bit, yeah. 
and just kind of get behind the uh, get behind the wagon here. Run over his buddy. Probably a little bit. <laughs> Some pieces of him as he fell apart. Okay. The last kobold on the back screams out for the corn and pulls something out of his patch and lights it and grabs on to Kakusho's legs. Like he's holding on with a bear hug. And he's holding something that Kakusho's familiar with because he <laughs> had one of these come <laughs> flying out of the wishing well at him. It is a lit explosive. That's fun. What's Kakusho going to do? You've got a kobold holding an explosive, hugging his legs. <laughs> uh, so h- how um, do I, can I tell how injured this kobold is? Like if I. Not very. Like he okay. stabbed him, but it wasn't, it wasn't a deep wound. So. Um, well, Kakusho being very large thinks that he can overpower this kobold. So just attempts to grab the explosive from the kobold. Okay. Just can try to wrestle it from him. Yeah. All right. That'll be a strength strength contest. Okay. Um. So do I just do like a strength saving throw, or what should I do? Well, no, just it's, yeah. Pretty. I don't think pretty much just roll. Just roll. roll any, I, you could roll a d five. Cobalt's got a minus one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, twenty. That was a sixteen plus a four. That's okay, my that's, third one tonight. <laughs> that's a negative one. The the dice know you're weak. That's all. Yes. They feel the same. Okay, so I've I, I've I've gotten the explosive from this cobalt, I assume, right? Yes. All right. Uh then I I throw it towards the, the dog cart that is trailing us. Okay. <laughs> Kakusha throws this explosive. It lands on the dog cart. There's nobody there to stop what's gonna happen, and it blows up. And totally destroys this uh, inferior construction of uh, of a wagon that the is a dog still, cart. Still hugging Kakusho's leg. Yes, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> we can we can drop out of initiative. <laughs> that's <laughs> one enemy left hugging on Kakusho for dear life, and one that's subdued by Rashida. And so I think that's Marvin. a good place to stop. Yeah. Marvin. <laughs> Marvin's convinced he's dying. <laughs> okay. No, I think we'll wrap it up here for tonight. This is a good stopping point. The uh the kobold invasion so far has been dealt with. You've got one to figure out what to do with who's hugging onto Kakusho for dear life and one who's tied up uh in the front <laughs> with uh Rashida. But uh or uh, you have successfully prevented any of these wagons from being disconnected. Uh, or the train being completely stopped. Hey, we did it! Yay! Big boy what happened to? Uh, I forgot. I forgot who fell off the train. But Varney. are we stopping going back for them? Or? Oh, Varney. Varney. Rest yeah. in pieces, Varney. He'll, 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 he'll probably. That's, be a, that's right. a question for next session. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we Maybe forgot just... about Varney. <laughs> Y'all right? I don't think we ran him over. No. All right, let's go ahead and get our sign off with that. Bye. 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 Bye.